Hi guys, welcome back to another video. For those who are new here, I'm Ali and this is my sister. This is my nephew. And this is Caramel right here sleeping. So for today's video guys, I'm going to show you how Filipinos usually process things when it comes to their relatives passing away. So yes, from my last vlog, I showed you my grandmother in the hospital and preparing for her operation. So two days after her operation, she did not make it and sadly she's gone. And for today's video, I'm just going to show you the way the burial and how we process the papers okay so that's it guys I'll see you These are some of my relatives that are going to join us during the burial. I'm giving out this white mask so that everyone and all of the family members are going to wear a white mask during the mass. Okay guys, so during the week, Nanai has so many uh, visitors aside from our neighbors. We also have a lot of relatives that, from both my grandmother and my grandfather's side. So there were so many people. I can show you a few clips here. And then with that, the local barangay or our barangay unit offered us to lend us a few chairs from our barangay there. And also they also let us lend um, a transportation to be used for today's burial. Um, this is from the vice mayor and that is from our mayor. And the other, those two multicabs over there are from the barangay, barangay unit. And so that's it. We have a lot of chairs and all that. So we're really thankful. Our family is very thankful for everyone. Those who really helped us. And if you're watching, thank you so much. And aside from that, we also decided to rent three jeepneys to yes to transport a lot of our relatives to the place. And I'll show you the burial later. So that's it, guys. So we're still waiting, or we're still preparing for the burial, and we're going to leave at 1 p.m. So that's it. Everyone is very busy, and some of them are having lunch, and most of them are just waiting. So that's it. We will go there later. Guys, it's very busy. Everyone is babay na. Nana is in there. So we, here we are. This is the Gusa Diversion Road. And that white van, that is where Nanay is. We're finally here in Golden Heaven and this is their entrance. Once you get inside, you'll find the multi-purpose hall or the chapel. Golden Heaven is located in Makapagal Avenue in Bulwa. Cagayan de Oro City and it is a it is a 14 kilometer or 28 minute drive from our home but that depends on the traffic so right now they're transferring Nanai from the van and placing her inside the chapel on the left side you'll find the TV and the sound system because one of my Nanai's daughter and her family cannot physically join the funeral so instead they offered their last message for Nanai and her son played a piano for her This is everyone and this is during the mass. So this is the multi-purpose hall. This is also part of the whole package. They provided 30 chairs during the mass and in the burial site they also provided 20 chairs and two 10 by 20 feet tents. And here they're watching the last message and also my cousin playing the piano.
Itu front seat, Tai. Oh, diha. Guys, we're finished with the whole um, event, the whole program, and we're now going to transfer Nanai from here, from their multi-purpose hall towards where we're really going to bury her. Here's Tatai. Hi, hey, Tai. So they will place Nanay there later. Hey guys, here they place Nanay inside na, and we have the flowers for her offering when she is going to get to her last destination. I'm still going to show that to you. And we have here Kuya. Hi. And then we have Nanay at the back, and we have Tata here in front bringing flowers over here. Okay, we're going now. That's where go where we are going. That's the destination. We're passing here in the shortcut because it's easy for Tatai to go down from here than to walk from the other side. Look guys, it's already starting. They transfer Nanai from the van to her final resting place. This is also part of the tradition. We'll offer flowers to her once her casket is brought down. As you can see here, they're sealing up the vault. Nana's casket is placed inside the vault which is made out of cement. They're placing Nana's casket inside the vault so that once they place all the soil, as you can see here, it will not squish Nana's casket. It will not damage her casket due to the pressure and the heaviness of the soil above her. Right here, they're dumping all the soil now. And this is the final placement of everything and they placed all the sympathy flowers at the back. So hi guys, welcome back. Uh, we are here again in the cemetery in Golden Heaven to honor Nanai's ninth day from her death. Yeah, it's, it's a tradition for Filipinos. Well, I'm not really sure for all the Filipinos, but Filipinos do have a lot of superstition and beliefs and all that. So one of our tradition here, the nine days after her death or after their death, we'll have to come back here and offer a prayer and also have a little get together with the family or the relatives at home. Also, after 40 days from her death, we'll also once again offer a prayer and also a little get together with the family. Also, after by one year from their death, we'll have to celebrate again and then annually after that. For now, I'm going to talk about how Nanai ended in this situation. Yes, we were all really positive and none of us really thought that we would come up to this day. So the day of the operation, we sent her off to the operating room and everything was good before her operation. The doctor had to clear her status, like everything was cleared, her blood her sugar and all everything was okay for the operating day then they sent her inside around almost 8 in the morning so we were waiting outside the whole day we didn't see her doctor he didn't, didn't come near us so we were starting to get really worried as to what was happening to Nanai because we can't get inside the operating room and we had really no idea what was happening inside so you know, we started to assist and in getting inside, trying to get inside, trying to get news from Nanai, like what was her situation. But then around 2 p.m., my mom was really like, I'm going, I'm going to get inside that operating room to get more information. So she really went inside and the nurses were like, no, no, you can't get inside. But no, no I just want to know about my mother. She was here earlier in the morning and we didn't get any news since then so they told us that Nana is okay she's asleep she's feeling a little dizzy from the anesthesia and they gave her a general anesthesia instead of just giving the anesthesia from here the lower back I'm not sure but they gave her a general anesthesia which means that she was asleep the whole time then by 5 p.m. almost 6 p.m. doctors said that 
Nana's situation was not good. There was a complication during the operation. It might be due to um, electrolyte imbalances or that maybe she had a heart attack during the operation. What should we do? And she said that we should send Nanai to ICU, monitor her heart and all. By then, we sent her to the ICU. We talk I even talked to Nanai. She was awake. So imagine how a fighter my grandma is. She was still awake even though had a heart attack. She went outside and was like, Nai! I was really trying to lift her spirits up so she wouldn't really worry about the whole situation. I was like, Nai! Nai! Very good Nai! How, how was the operation? And she was like, Samad, which meant a wound. You knew there was a wound on her leg. She said, Nai! Can you see me? Do you know who I am? We tried to ask her because in case she got amnesia or whatever that problem with the anesthesia so we tried to ask her that so she said yes i knew you your your son son you're my granddaughter so she had x-ray just to check if the bone and the everything was right and yes the the plate was inside her leg it was her leg was properly placed like everything was okay so we had really high hopes we told her that nai we can't go inside with you don't worry, there's a lot of doctors with you who are going to take care of you. And we're just going to wait out here while you're in there. You can't go inside because of the protocol and all. Stayed here, there for the whole night. And then by the next day, her situation got worse. The doctor said that she had UTI. And then she also had such high fever. Imagine for the whole week of having her leg fully fractured. And she did not experience any... UTI nor fever during that whole period but then during the time that she was in the ICU she already was experiencing that. Nanai really did have a heart attack during the operation. She was awake but she was really weak and that she had an electrolyte imbalance during the operation so from that day on she stayed there for two days and during that time her situation was getting worse until her heart lungs and that they had to put a tube to help her breathe lastly her kidney failed and that was i think the most end point of that whole situation if her kidney did not fail i think there would have been a chance to save her in the last day we had to revive her twice and the doctor said that they lost nanai for 15 minutes imagine the damage it would cause in the brain she died last June 1, Wednesday, and so that was the end of it. We really did our best, everything, and we really did not expect this to happen. Now I'm going to talk about how we prepared all the papers that were needed, how we had to prepare for her burial and all. So during the day that she died, they released Nanai's cheddar. They told us to return back to the hospital and process the billing so that we could get her death certificate. So Nanai's cadaver was released and we went sent her to um, St. Peter where they embalmed Nanai's body. Nanai's wake took one week because we had to wait for her relatives that were staying from far places who so had to wait for them to come back here. So after three days, we went back to the hospital and they told us that we have to process this and that. And so her bill was 160,000 plus. It got lessened due to her being senior. And then it got lessened more due to her feel health, the one that I talked about in my last vlog. So it went down to 70,000 something. And then my mom really tried to look for other ways to lessen the bill more. It got lessened to 30,000. Imagine from 160 to 30,000. After that, they gave us this death certificate where we have to let three groups sign the paper before they approve her death certificate. So first, we went to St. Peter. They have to sign that they really did the embalming on her. After that, we went to City Hall. And then lastly, we had to go to City Hall where they have to register that Nanai is already deceased. So they have to change the records there that this person is already deceased. Um, we finished that in just one day. By the next day, we went to Golden Heaven to process this. If you're a Filipino or if you're a foreign, if you're watching this and you're planning to stay here in the Philippines for good, I think it's a really good idea to be practical. It's really good to prepare than 
die unprepared. Because you know what? My grandfather bought this land over here. Their Nana's, well, resting place right now. 20 or 15 years ago. So the price was around 30,000, just 30,000 something. But now, if you buy one of these lots here, it's 100,000. Each lot here is 100,000. Imagine the difference of the prices. We will have to dig the land. Before, you have to only pay around 17,000 for that. But now, it's 35,000. It's 35,000 just to dig. We even joked about it. Like, can we just dig? Can our relatives do the digging? And so since Nanai was a senior citizen, it got um, lessened. There was a discount. So from 35,000 to 25,000. You can't bury your body if you do not have the death certificate. And you cannot have your death certificate unless you pay all of the expenses. So we paid for the 25000 in Golden Heaven. They said that you have to process everything. You have to pay for everything and pass the required papers. Before the burial, you have to at least have three days. You have to have three days before the actual burial date. Because if not, you'll have to pay for the rush payment. I think that is 2,000 pesos additional. That's why her wake also took one week because we had to wait three days. Comment down below if your process or like your tradition there is different from our tradition. Since we're already here in Golden Heaven, I want to show you something really special in this place. This memorial is in loving remembrance of the victims of the typhoon Sandong that ravaged Kagendi or city on December 17, 2011. Those over the pillars over there, those are all the names of the deceased during that time. Before this was a fountain, I'm not sure why they didn't turn it on, but yes, there's a fountain over here. So we were waiting for Nanai to get home from St. Peter from the embalming and here she is. This happened around 12 a.m. And right here they're setting up the place. They're placing a curtain in the background and also a red carpet. So this is the stand for Nana's casket. They will put her casket on top of this later and I'll show you. And here she is, she's finally home. They were having a hard time trying to get her inside the house. And this is Tata's first viewing. This is a very painful moment. And here are all the beautiful sympathy flowers. This was during the last vigil or the last day of the week. This is a view, the 360 view. Let me do view Nana over here. Okay, those are all lands here. Yeah. It's a really wide place. It also stretched out towards that area over there and also there's I think a chapel over there too and also in that area too look at this guys it's so wide golden heaven has a total lot area of 10 hectares room guys i'm not going to go inside anymore but i can still show you the outside there's a stairway there and up and that's the male and the female and that's it it's just below the chapel based from the golden heaven official site their latest rates starts from 75,000 pesos to 2 million and 210,000 I think these are the models of their shrine. This is an open chapel and that is the replica of Christ the Redeemer.
so this is the view from up top and look at the clouds guys it's so pretty up here So that's the end of the video guys before we end it i also want to show you guys or i just want to inform you guys that behind me over that by that statue over there those are where they place the people who are cremated so this is the cremation cremated area is that the correct term i'm not really sure how to call it but that's where they place people who were cremated so that's it guys so yes, thank you so much for sharing your time with me. Thank you so much for joining me in this journey with Nanai from the hospital to here. Uh, this is a really unexpected event and thank you so much, especially those people out there who are really supportive and those people who are like really kind in the comments for all the prayers that you gave us. And yes, that's it to you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Please leave a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell to get notified every time I post a new video. So that's it guys, bye bye, keep safe, see you in the next video. And here are the Bisaya words of the day. The first one is Samad which means wound. The second one is Haya which means wake. The third one is Hilak which means cry. And the fourth one is Lubong which means funeral. And lastly, we have Cementerio which means cemetery.